Well, good morning, Brian. Today's the day. We start in on this one. We'll see how we do. Uh, I see you've got your battery strap here. Let's just, I guess, just recap right quick. Come here. Come off of there. Hmm. Okay. I forget if this one is live or not. I guess let's get a let's get a base reading here right quick. Let me pull out a pull out a battery for this one. Let's see what we can find. I'm not real happy with the look of that coil, but I just want to recap what's going on. Let's just see what's happening. I saw some flickering. Hey, look at that. <laughs> it's not super happy, but it is alive. Okay, good. Well, that's a good starting point. Let's get that out of there. Get out. Get. Um, let's, uh, let's, let's get this thing uncased and go for it. Yeah, someone used uh, some solder probably cold solder maybe on this on this coil i'm amazed that it works i'm always amazed when i see this and it works but you can actually see that's a that's one of the that's one of the wires one of the coil wires loose now normally when i see that that usually means the coil is dead but uh this one's working um i mean it's it's alive i'll, t I'll test the I'll, I'll test the throughput on it and see how it behaves um the watch also had a good amount of had some corrosion inside here and some water that got in through the crown you can actually see sort of a corrosion staining on the on the stem not a ton but there it is you can see it uh, also uh, a couple more things you've got some dinks and dents and dunks in your um crown tube and we can see there's actually corrosion rust water inside the crown tube that got there uh, I'll, I'll do my best I have some ways to sometimes free that up because that's right on the ceiling surface it's right where the seal sits uh, and lastly uh, looking through I see a few things okay we've got your battery strap here fine we have one stepped screw it's got the little step on it right there uh, but you the other one is just a standard old Seiko screw so we are down we're missing oh and we're also missing the rest this the the strap rest washer right here there should be a washer right there and I certainly don't see one so those are super duper rare so I'm gonna have to basically I'm gonna have to make a replacement for that uh, I do have some new old stock stepped screws not many but I do have them and you will get one and we'll see what I can do with that stem and I'll see what the circuit tester says about this coil uh, but let's move forward yeah definitely got some cold solder on here and some popped threads um, uh, even I mean just for the fact that we got the cold solder on here uh, that's it's no bueno and this also this isn't even a 7549 coil that doesn't have the plastic wrap on it the 7548 replacement and this it's got this big old janked wire on here this this thing shouldn't be running at all and something like this where you're relying on cold solder um to keep it going uh it's dicey so i would strongly recommend we get rid of that uh, and swap it out with a good one because uh, i do have them uh your circuit actually looks pretty decent we have some corrosion and crap right here that's where the stem would be sitting but i can clean that up the rest of it that looks great nice and clean should be fine Okay, let's uh, let's move forward. Okay, just looking at the dial side right now, uh, the water obviously had an effect. Uh, we have hazing and staining on the hands, and the loom is a little stained around the markers. Oh, sorry, around the windows, but and the markers are a little stained as well. In the old days, I might have suggested relooming, but these days I would just let it be. I have I have some tricks. I can clean up this hand surface uh, and minimize some of this stuff. Uh, I also have new old stock sweep hand, and I do believe that we did talk about that. So we'll get you a new old stock sweep hand for that. And I'll clean up the dial as best as I can. Uh, I might be able to also, darn it, 
second off of there. I, I could also, if you wanted, see if I can repair that scratch right there. I would if it were mine, uh, but you let me know. Okay, let's move forward. Okay, doing some more poking here. Center wheel is, your, your center wheel, your port for the center wheel is super worn. See that? Yikes. That's, that is no bueno. That is a whole lot of shifting. So we're going to have to drill out that and uh, put a jewel in there. That's not unusual. Okay. So just a fun little thing. One of the artifacts we see when there's been water inside is you get a situation because the water gets pulled to the loom because the loom is salt based. And what it also does is it pulls the loom, the salt out of, um, it pulls the loom out of solution, basically out of the stuff. And I don't think you can really see it. I'm trying, but there's, there's like under magnification, there's like this field of clear crystals, salt crystals on top of all of this. The salt having gotten pulled out of the loom. There's also, you can see we had a line of rust around the whole thing, and that's the underside of the chapter ring. So that'll all need to be cleaned up, chapter ring and dial. So here's the, one of the things that makes a 7549 a 7549. We've got the, well, one we got. Uh, the back of the plate, by the way, looks pretty good. Uh, I mean, it's dirty over here where the stem came in, but the rest of it's fine. But anyway, what makes a 7549 a 7549? Big fat canyon pinion, big fat hour wheel, much wider snap ring for the day wheel, and the D wheel is also much bigger. It's to create more torque uh for these watches to make sure they stayed accurate so it's uh, one of those one of those neat things but this is really that's one of the differences that and one additional jewel but that's what makes a 7549 here we are underneath that that day wheel is gone now you can get a better look at sort of the fat hour wheel and cannon pinion but you can also see the fact that the the evidence of the fact that the um the 754x quartz movements are built on the same plan as the 6309, 6306s. They use all the same calendar parts. You can see, this is one of the things I always laugh about. They didn't bother even changing this, this right here, this calendar uh, date wheel guard thing. It has a spot for the um, for the upper dia shock, lower dia shock setting right there. Isn't that interesting? Of course there isn't one. And there's also a nice hole for the, uh, for the mainspring arbor, which is not here, but the rest of it's exactly the same. Okay, got the main plate stripped down. Uh, the leak uh, through the crown could have been, ooh, it could have been gnarly, but you uh, you missed everything, thankfully. You got a little bit of stuff in here, but none of the setting components were bad or anything. There's the, there's the port for the center wheel. You can see how it's all blown out. See, it's like an oval. It's not round anymore. Yeah, that's what we need to deal with. There are your jewels and upper bushing. And there's the rest of it. So, gonna get that machined out there and uh, put a jewel in there. I don't know why they didn't jewel this. If they they jeweled it on all their other watches, but well, mechanicals. But I mean, but if they jeweled this, boy, these things would be just bulletproof more than ever. Uh, looking at another part here, just so you know, it's just about to pull your stem apart. You are missing your darn it. You're missing your stem rest washer which is right, should be right here. It's a washer that basically holds onto the little ears with of this split stem to keep it in place. So I, I have them. Um, it's one of those things that a lot of people who aren't familiar with Seiko, they tend to lose them. Because you're when you assemble this, you're compressing this spring down with this little teeny tiny washer on the top of it. And if it gets away from you, it launches off into space and you'll never see it again. It's, it's a tiny little washer. So you're gonna need that, that washer done. Yeah, always, uh, here's your crown seal, covered in rusty junk. So I'm gonna have to get into the crown with uh, peg wood and some solvents and compressed air and stuff to try and get all that crap out of there. But it's amazing, because actually this, this crown doesn't look, I mean, this seal, it doesn't look that bad. I've seen worse, but this one, it failed. Well, that's the way it goes. Okay, now keep in mind this is not clean, but there's that center jewel. All machined out and installed. Good to go. Now we're going to put everything through the cleaner, multi-stage cleaner.
And there it is. Boy, that, that cures that nicely. Great thing about these jewels, by the way, is that Seiko used these jewels in damn near everything, uh, both in Dany and Sua. So, like, they're they're using these jewels today, which makes them that they're not so hard to get, which is which is good. This is always the real fun part, and I'm not joking. I really mean that. Is getting these cases apart and getting them clean. Your screws, and everything's just got uh, paint on it. But the great thing is no corrosion. A lot of times I pull these apart and they'll have they'll be corrosion and pitting between the uh, the shroud and the case, and that's that is not what we find here. It, it's dirty, but man, I've seen worse. Trust me. I wonder what's up with that. I wonder what's up with that. Why is that all jacked up? Would you stop wiggling? Your threads and your crown tube look okay. It's like somebody was hauling. It looks like they were pinching it or something. I wonder why. Maybe they were trying to get it out? I wonder why. Well, I'll do what I can. I'm not sure. Those are pretty hard to correct, and these cannot be replaced. They're electrically welded into the case, and these were never sold as a separate part anyway. Well, I think the threads are okay. Let's move forward. Yeah, more good news. Uh, something else I often see with watches like this is there'll be all kinds of corrosion around the crystal screw-down retaining ring. No such situation here. Clean threads. That's great. But, uh, you should remember to get this off of here. People always forget about this. That's the little nylon slider ring. These are actually kind of not that easy to get a hold of. So, and these are not critical for uh, water resistance. They just make it so that the when you screw that down, this has a shim on it, so it doesn't crack the glass. So those are real important to keep. Okay, let's keep. Okay, going. so um, we are on the flip side of things now. Uh, here is your freshly assembled crown, and the stem rest washer is there between the spring and the split stem. You can see it right like, uh, I'm trying to think. It's that silver ring right there between the bottom of the split stem and the top of the spring. That is your stem rest washer. Uh, here's one that's still in the packet, so you can see the size of the thing that we're talking about. Yours came out of this packet. I sliced down there at the bottom, and you'll get this and you can look at it. But anyway, it's always nice to see when we can get that ring back in place, because then this all should behave now as it should. And we can trust it. You can see the ring there, that silver ring right at the bottom. Okay. Okay, it uh, took a little longer than I expected. Um, your, it is, everything is all back together. It's all working. Um, I did find this sort of a, here's the, here's the, the, you've got now two step screws as you should. I should have actually taken a film of this before. You can't really see it, but under here, see that right there? That is actually a correct rest washer, uh, the correct kind. I didn't have to make one. I found a genuine one. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so we've got that. Uh, this is your original coil. I tested it, and the power output is correct. It's in the right, um, it's in the right range. So rather than replace a working part, even one that's been repaired, uh, my recommendation would be to just leave it uh, until something goes. I don't know. Just basically, we'll just go with it. I haven't put this on the tester yet. Uh, I don't know how it's running, but uh, it's. I mean, it's clean and strong, and I have good expectations. Uh, and again, the output on the coil is fine. So. Let's just move forward. Okay, so after our discussion about your handset um, and the damage that they've got and whether or not you wanted to deal with that, you, in fact, decided to opt for this. One of my rarest treasures. Genuine, new old stock, some 549 hands. The real deal. The real deal. I, uh, I can't imagine I'll ever find another set of these. I've had these for so long, I actually don't even remember where I got them from. But I'm going to go on your watch. We're going to move forward. Okay. Okay. There's the 
new old stock handset in place. You can see its movements running nicely. We're hitting the center of the markers, but I'll double check that, but it's the way they ought to be. Chunking along, doing its thing. Uh, you may remember I talked about your crown tube. I've improved it. It's still got some divots in there, but it's straighter. It also was bent upwards. So now it's straighter and I've cleaned it up. And also somebody had been wrenching on it. And this right here, it's not supposed to be just a straight tube. It's supposed to actually neck in a little bit. It's supposed to get tighter right at the, right at the edge. And so I had to restore that because it was kind of flared out like it was a trumpet. And it was also smashed into sort of an oval. Uh, so what we do is I use a, a piece from a staking, staking kit here. And what this little concave diddly thing does as you as you work it around is you go tick 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 and it'll round it out and it will close it up which is makes it more like it was which is what we want okay moving forward okay good morning uh we got us uh we are here uh now back with your movement it has been running in all night long this light's starting to fade out This is your original sweep hand missing the other thing. I haven't dealt with the new hands yet. Okay. So it looks like right now we're gaining five tenths of a second per day. Let's see if we can dial this thing down. So I'm gonna take this off here for a sec. I'm gonna flip it over so I can get to the trimmer. With this light out, it's hard to tell if it's getting a signal. I have to check that connection. Boy, it's getting weaker by the second. Okay. At the very least, though, I can see what it is doing. So now let us check it out. That's going to be real wild. I haven't opened that, opened that piece up before. Because you really want to see it to make sure you're not missing anything. I can see it flashing. It's pretty weak though. Okay, the rate went up, so let's go the other way. See what else we can find. Hang on. It's tough to do this because I'm not right on top of it and I'm not wearing magnifiers, which is always makes things a little interesting because I can't really see the slot from this far away, but it's so fun to show this off. Ah, found it. Okay. The same? Come on. Boy, you know, this is just not ideal having to do this from so far away. Probably better for me to just leave my hand here. Aha! I was going the wrong direction. Aha! Starting to get somewhere. Mm -hmm. Let's go the other way, just a titch.
Okay, nine, <clears throat> nine one hundredths of a second per day positive. Let's see if that holds. No. Dial it up a little bit. Come on, get over here. Come on. Give me a signal. I guess I know what I'm doing after I finish this job. Gotta rip the QT99 apart and see what's up with that light. Come on. Give me some normality here. it a bit more. I mean, this is still one-tenth of a second per day. That's still quite accurate, but let's see if we can get better, huh? I'm only picking up two flashes. That's not right. This thing's not hearing it correctly. That's absolutely not right. The problem is, is it's not hearing every flash, but I can't tell that because this light isn't staying put. Okay, now I'm getting more or less still down. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I wanna finish putting this watch together and then <clears throat> I'll assemble all this stuff. I mean, we're right now we're, you know, one-tenth of a second per day. Obviously, we can get in tighter than that. Right now, my tool isn't doing what I want it to do. And I've gotta figure out what's up with this indicator light. So I'm gonna finish this job. I'm gonna dial all this thing in all together the way it ought to be, make the final video, and then I'll go back in after I fix this baby and we'll test it again. Okay. Oh, another thing that I just noticed, your, um, this is your movement ring, it goes around there. You're missing your movement ring spring, it's just flat out not there. But, thankfully, I happen to have brand new, new old stock, movement ring spring. And it's a good thing too. Well, and there we are. All repaired and ready to go. This is the NOS handset in place. Everything's hitting the markers as it should. Everything's clean. I tell you, it's the power of cleaning. That's what's get. That's what really does it. Even if you have, you know, wear and stuff like that. If something is clean, it just, uh, it just feels so much better in so many ways. Nice and clean, running strong, no more problems. I, I'm pretty, I'm still amazed at the wear on the, for the center, for the hole for the center wheel. Uh, it's rare for me to see them that worn. Here's your, here's your original handset. Here are your bad parts, including your crystal. There are your original spring bars that came with this. I'll include some new spring bars for you. Uh, 
I don't know if you want one of uh, want a new rub, correct rubber strap for this a flat vent, but I do have um, I do have some some new flat vents from Uncle Seiko Larry. His his recreation of the GL831 is awesome. I don't know. And that's really about it. All nice and tight, all clean, all brand new seals, new battery, repaired. All the parts that were missing are there, and it's good to go, ready to strap on. Thank you so much.